Today at Deutsche Auto Parts, we're going to be going over installing a P3 digital vent boost gauge on a Mark 7 GTI. The tools required for this installation are a Volkswagen trim removal tool or a bone tool, a T20 Torx. We also like to use a small pocket screwdriver, a flashlight, and we also like to use the Volkswagen magnetic bolt tray to keep all your screws organized when you take them out of the vehicle. This prevents you from losing stuff while you're doing the installation. Behind it you see this is the P3 vent gauge itself. Here's the digital display that gets installed in the vent. This is the actual module that it plugs into. And then back here you'll see this is the wiring where it plugs into OBD2 port and then has other options for plugging into other sensors as well. When we're installing the P3 cars gauge, we can start by removing the headlight switch. You push in and then you turn to the to the right. That will allow the lock on the headlight switch to release. You then push the release on the electrical connector and pull out. We can then go through and with our T20 Torx and remove this screw that holds the trim piece for the headlight switch in. We're doing this to give us easier access to remove the vent above. And we're gonna throw that in our magnetic tray. And then we can just pull out. And just keep in mind, you do have the dimmer switch still plugged in, so you can either leave it hanging or unplug it. For, for us, we're going to unplug it so it's out of the way for the shots. Now we go ahead and remove the trim panel on the side and we can do so with our trim removal tool just pry underneath and you just pull out we can then remove the vent uh, at each corner of this is a tab that kind of holds it in and all we're going to do is you can kind of get your hands underneath and pop it loose sometimes these tabs can be locked in there pretty good so sometimes it's easier to remove the trim piece first so we can take our trim tool and pry underneath and release the trim from around the vent. Now that that's out of the way, you can actually see the clips on the bottom and then the upper portion, you can see them as well. You just have to get them to clear. So you can get in here. And on this particular one, this clip is giving us a, a hard time. push it up with your fingers, it'll allow that to come forward, and then you will need to put some tension on the top to get the top clips to clear, and you can kind of work it out. Okay, once we have all of our tabs released, then make sure you get them out. It is going to take some working to get in there with the small screwdriver to kind of pop the clips down. Once you get them down at each four corners, it should release. So right now, there we go, and we're out. Okay, now we're gonna remove these dash trim pieces or, or at least loosen them and pull them out of the way. This will allow us to run the wire uh, from the OBD2 port under here, up the dash, and through the vent for the gauge itself. 
So we can start by removing this cubby, open it up. You can push this to the side here, and that's where one of the clips are. And then you can pull it out of place. It just has two mounting parts on the bottom, and then these tabs that hold it in from pulling out. We can get that out of the way. And then we have some these T20 Torx screws. There should be one here. And just keep in mind, you don't have to remove this trim piece completely. All you're doing is loosening it so that you can run the wires around it. And that's going to be all of them. So you have one, two, three, and four there. And then we can just loosen this trim up. And that gives us enough space to work with. Now we're going to run our wires for the gauge. Here is for the OBD2 connection. We can just pull this out and run it through. Remember, don't go too crazy pulling on this because all we're doing is releasing enough tension to get it through. And that's all we really, that's all we're trying to accomplish with this. And we can just let that hang for now. Now these wires, this plugs into the control module, which we're gonna mount over here. We suggest that you may wanna use double-sided adhesive to mount it to the, to the side here, uh, just to prevent it from rattling inside your dashboard. So. We can run this up and around here and you're going to end up with some bunch of slack of wire. You don't really need to worry too much about that. And then lastly, we have this green wire right here. This green wire is the activation for the headlights. This way, when you turn on your headlights, it will dim. Now we can take our control module and we can attach the connection here and set these screws in place so that you don't have any connection issues. Just keep in mind these extra wires here are normal. The, this one is for uh, an optional boost sensor, an analog one that we would run into the engine bay. And then here are other optional sensors that you can add as well. So you would mount this in place here and tuck it out of the way. And then we can run the wires for our gauge itself. Okay, now we're going to take apart our vent assembly to install the P3 cars gauge. There is an option to get it with the vent uh, or without. It is obviously less expensive to purchase without a vent assembly. So if you take a look here, these fins on the vent actually come up apart from the vent assembly itself. So you can stick your screwdriver in there and kind of release it a little bit. And then you can see it kind of pops loose fairly easy. And now we have our vent. Once we have removed the vent portion from the assembly itself, we can turn it over and look at the back. We can start by removing these top two and then the two here. So we get our small pocket screwdriver and get in there and pop them loose. And part of this, once you release the back part, the vents actually have kind of a convenient little notch for you to get in there and pry under once you can slide them around. And we can pull this one out of the way. And now we 
we can pop this one loose here. And we can pull that one out of the way. You are going to kind of wiggle it once you get the one side out and just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pop the other one out of the other side of the vent. You're probably going to want to hang on to these in case you ever want to take this back out and sell it so you won't have to buy a new vent assembly when the time comes. So once we have that done, also one thing to keep in mind, don't go crazy letting this thing rotate around uh, because you will have a problem with it. If it falls apart, you're, you're gonna really regret it. So these two nubs on either side of the digital portion pop into the front part of where the gauge went. So it's pretty self-explanatory, just pops in place. And there you have it. Now we can in reinstall this in the vent assembly. All right. Once we have this all installed, we can now install it in our vent assembly. And what we're gonna wanna do is take this wire and we're gonna wanna run it through the furthest side of the vent. This will allow you mo the most movement you can with all these directional vents. So we can take this wire you're going to need to have the back portion open and you can run that through and feed it all the way through. They have a nice black coating on the wire itself so that it won't, it won't be um, too obvious that it's in there to keep it looking clean. So once we have that in place, um, all we do is pop it in place. So we can get, all right. So that's all set. Uh, well, we did not hook up. If you take a look, we actually forgot to hook up the vents, the directional vents, um, because you have to have them set in the right place. Otherwise they won't work anymore. So we're gonna have to take ours back out to get that corrected. All right, so we'll show you what that looks like if we can here. If you take a look here, here's the back portion of the directional vent. That needs to slide over this portion right here. And you gotta make sure that's lined up, otherwise your directional directions of your vent will not work at all. So it's gonna be hard for us to show that on camera, but you can kind of look from the side and pop it in place maybe before we can test it before we actually snap it in place this time. And it does, it does work, so. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the vent assembly with the gauge. Here's our wire for the display. We're gonna go and put it in the hole and there is a nice hole here that we can run this cable through to plug it into the control module itself. And we can just pull that out and we'll get that all, all cleaned up and plugged in. Okay, before we put the vent assembly in place. We are gonna to wanna to put the trim on. If you don't have to, but it is pretty challenging to install reinstall the trim with the vent in the vehicle. So all you do is snap it in place. And, and then we can put the vent assembly back in. And we can actually can remove this now. And we have our gauge. All right, so as we push this back in place, make sure that we are feeding the cable in so it doesn't get hung up on anything. And then we can pop that back in place. Just make sure you push on each one of the corners and you're all set. Now we're ready to install the OBD2 connector portion into the OBD2 connection. 
we can just pull this wire up and get it in place. And just, you're gonna want a firm press on it and then you can just pull any tension up. Once we do that, we are all set to install our panel. Now that we've plugged that in, we're ready to reinstall the panel and we can do so and start by installing all of our screws. Now that we've installed that panel, we can install the, the trim for the headlight switch, run these two connectors around, pop that in place, and we can put that screw back in right here. and we're all set. Now we're ready to get the display hooked up to the control module itself. On our kits, we include uh, this adhesive back attached to the control module itself. This will give you something to mount somewhere on the dashboard. Uh, every model is gonna be different. This particular model, you can mount it right here to this plate. You are gonna wanna clean that up with an alcohol swab before you try to adhere it, otherwise it won't stick. It seems like there's some sort of coating to prevent rust. Um, so it doesn't really stick real well if you don't, if you don't clean it up yet. We are gonna include the alcohol swab as well as the adhesive back on the module. And so we wiped that off pretty good. As you can see here, it is pretty dirty uh, and it's gonna be tough to make stuff stick to that. So first we can start by plugging in the display and we can kind of get those cables out of the way. Make sure this is dry. There's some paper towels here. We can just dry it off real quick. All right, so we can peel off the adhesive back and we're gonna wanna kind of move these wires out of the way here. And you're gonna wanna move this upwards and then we can stick it in place. Once we're done with that, we can push these wires inside the dashboard as they are not they don't need to be in the way. And now we can reinstall our trim piece. So, here's our trim piece. You are gonna wanna make sure again, you don't pinch anything in, in there. Now that's in place and you're all set there. Now we can reinstall our cubby and you do that by popping the two bottom portions on to their nubs and then you can kind of just work that into place. It does require a little bit of tension but, and then just make sure that it moves freely and that you got no problems with the wires in place. Now we can reinstall the headlight switch. Uh, remember we have, on this particular model, we have this scotch lock in place with that green wire connected to it. That is for the auto dim set on the gauge itself. Plug it back in place. And then we can slide it in place. 
and turn it and it'll be locked in place. So here we have our functioning P3 cars digital vent gauge. We have it standard set on boost, but there are a lot of functions of this unit. As you can see, if we blip the throttle, you'll see it changes. Right now it is obviously in vacuum. Then you can take a look through the features. Boost is one, coolant temperature, air intake temperature, ignition timing, exhaust gas temperature, throttle, RPMs, vehicle speed, zero to 60, and your charging system voltage. And then we get back to boost.